Hey guys, let's take a look at the care plan for thrombocytopenia. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of thrombocytopenia. We're also going to take a look at additional things that would be included in this care plan, like subjective and objective data, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. So thrombocytopenia is defined as a low platelet count and an increased risk of bleeding. Usually thrombocytopenia is a side effect of another disease process like leukemia, some immune disorders, or even medications. So thrombocytes are essential to the body because as they clump together and form clots, they seal blood vessels when injury or damage occurs. So if bleeding does occur, it can be internal or it can be external. Many factors influence the development of thrombocytopenia, such as cancers, autoimmune diseases, infections, surgery, alcohol use disorder, and also certain medications. The condition can be inherited or acquired. So generally, a low platelet count develops when the bone marrow fails to produce enough thrombocytes, or the bone marrow makes enough, but the body destroys them or uses them too quickly, or when the spleen holds on to too many platelets. So the desired outcome is to increase platelet production and availability, minimize the risk of excessive bleeding, and to treat that underlying cause. So let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with thrombocytopenia may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. So this might include bruising easily or bleeding gums with brushing. Although patients might even be asymptomatic or have no symptoms at all. So objective data includes petechiae or purpura, abnormal vaginal bleeding, epistaxis, or a platelet count on CBC of less than 100,000. Let's take a look at the nursing interventions when caring for a patient with thrombocytopenia. Assess for signs of internal and external bleeding, including blood in the urine or stool, bleeding of the mucous membrane, such as the gums and the skin. Observe the skin for petechiae, purpura, and open wounds. Bleeding, it can be minimal, it can be non-existent, or it can be severe. So even though platelets are low, administering platelets may not be indicated if there are no signs of active bleeding. So treatment is going to depend on the cause of the thrombocytopenia. Immunosuppressants may be given if the underlying cause is autoimmune. Androgens may be given in, to males only because of the possibility of unwanted hair growth that would occur in females. And vinca alkaloids may also be given if other measures have failed. Okay, so NSAIDs such as ibuprofen and aspirin can, can increase the risk of bleeding and should be avoided. So if pain relief is necessary, recommend acetaminophen or non-pharmacological alternatives. Decreased platelets does not always indicate bleeding in the patient, but it may lead to excessive bleeding if injury occurs. So teach your patient about bleeding precautions. Patients should use only electric razors. They should Needle sticks should be limited. They should use a soft toothbrush and provide safety devices like non-skid shoes and socks to prevent injury. It's important to teach your patient to avoid high-risk activities that could cause injury like contact sports to reduce the risk of bleeding. Alcohol use should be avoided or at least limited because alcohol slows the production of platelets. And like I mentioned earlier, NSAIDs could increase the likeliness of bleeding, so it should be avoided. 
Finally, increase the intake of green leafy vegetables as they are high in vitamin K, which helps to promote clotting. Finally, removing the spleen may be necessary to treat thrombocytopenia, and if this is the case, it increases the risk for infection in the patient. So teach the patient to monitor for fever, rash, and other signs of infection. Okay, guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for thrombocytopenia. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.